Good evening everyone, it's Christine here and I don't think I've made a video since last week. I was trying to rack my brain, what have I been up to? But we'll try and remember and we'll have a chat about that um, during today's video. So I wanted to pop back on and share my work in progress on my Roxy Journal of Stitchery Down the Garden Path piece with the prompt for this two week period. So we're one week in of visitors or a visitor to the garden. So I've gone with these beautiful little Beatrix Potter scraps of fabric that I had, um, which I have been working on. And also the theme of a bramble sort of hedge through which we're looking and seeing what our little visitors to the garden are doing. So I wanted to do a few things with you tonight to just show you how I've been working on the piece and how I'm planning to continue to work on it. So last time around, um, if you watched the earlier video, you'll remember that we worked out where we wanted to position our pieces um, and cut out um, the shapes. I probably did it the most difficult way and you'll also remember that I just couldn't for the life of me last time seem to cut straight. Um, hopefully I'll be less um, clumsy tonight. So I've proceeded to um, add some nice little embellishments to this piece, which we can do some of that together, just so you can see how I've created these little um, roses on the hedge, which include two different colors of Appleton wool um, and some beads for their center. Um, I'll show you those up a bit closer a bit later. You'll also remember that we cut out this under piece of um, sort of wadding. Um, well, not really a wadding, it's more like a padded sort of jacket material that I got from the reverse art truck and originally I was just planning to put the top piece on and then sort of stitch that down um, over where I had the wadding but I decided that I wanted to give the hedge or the bramble um, a bit more depth to it and so I decided to use some little um, strips so I'm just going to reach through see if I can grab a, a strip do I have any strips here? I think I've got one here. There we go. Got all sorts of threads on it. Um, so I used strips of the fabric, just like this, which I just tore off um, the bigger bit of fabric and I used a length of it to then go around and place it around um, where I had cut it out. And that way it's got a nice um, effect of giving me an unfrayed um, edge and I was able to crinkle it to give the hedge a bit more texture. And then what I'm going to do when I'm stitching it down, and again, the key key thing I've done is put some arrows on my pieces so I know where I've actually got to um, have them pointing up because I kept getting confused which was the up and which was the, the down on it. Um, but what I'm gonna do with these bits, um, and perhaps we can do it afterwards, we can start it, is as I sew the top bit on, I'm just gonna ever so slightly tuck um, the edges under as I sew it around on this piece. And you'll get the lovely effect then as the two pieces sort of meld together of, um, yeah, that depth, depth in the hedge, but the two pieces will become sort of like one, I think. Um, and then I've been doing some quite detailed um, stitching on my little Peter Rabbit piece. And I thought we could do a little bit of that um, together as well. I'll show you how I've been creating the sort of um, woven or knitted effect on his jacket. And I'll just talk through the other um, stitching I've been doing. There's a lot of, um, as you can see on the back, there's a lot of stitching that's been done. You might not even be able to see when you're looking at the front, like with the little the little bird, but there is a heap of little, tiny little stitches, including these slightly larger um, open chain stitches that I did to create the effect of the, the feathers. And then all of the ends of the, the carrots. Carrot ends are generally a bit more fringy in my, in my experience, but I just stuck with what the, the fabric design was, but then introduced quite a bit of color variation and tried to really create that sense of the the movement of the leaves. Um, I even stitched down and was starting to stitch down the, the bottom as you can see there but then I realized that we won't actually be able to see um, the bottom of him on that and you'll also see I've done um, the same just little short and long stitches just to create and following the pattern of the the shading and likewise on the bird the little um, I think this is a is it a robin redbreast? 
not quite the breast area, is it? Um, the little bird. Um, even, yeah, those are little ready orange stitches in there. And then the carrot just has a whole lot of satin, satin stitch on it. And then for the rabbit, I use two different types of, of brown to do his stitching. But we'll come back to that and we might even do a bit of um, that painting with thread on these little these little bunnies. We're probably only going to be able to see the top bit of them. So we'll, we'll focus on that. So let's come back to our piece here. And I hope you're all doing well. I know a few of you um, I've seen from your videos and um, comments a few of you have been having a bit of a tough trot. So I hope, um, yeah, I hope you're doing well. Hope you're recovering, recovering well. It's never fun when you're not, not feeling at your best. So definitely my thoughts are with you. So these little flowers, I haven't shown you them up close yet, have I? So I've created them with two different colours of Appleton wool and then with a bead in the centre. So I've used a darker Appleton wool colour um, in the centre and then a lighter one for the petals. And I've done the centre with, um, I think, three, three loops of... Um, three loops for a French knot and then the leaves around the edge I've just done with little sort of long stitches to form the petals but let me show you if that's easier than trying to explain when my sometimes my words have disappeared at the end of the day sometimes like it feels like I've spoken too many words and that's it <laughs> okay well this one's got a knot on the end I must have been planning to use it I think I was actually. I found with this piece, I've just been sort of doing little little bits and pieces on it here and there, and I just find myself getting sort of lost in it. And then I was like, oh, I better better save a few of the the rosebuds to to show to the others. So we've put a knot on the end, and we're just going to pop up, and then we're going to do three twists to make a French knot. Go back down near the hole. Hold this um, little sort of piece there so that it forms just a nice tight um, knot and then I'm going to jump down to the next one just do all the knots at the one time. Again I'm not worried at all if I get any sort of crinkling in this fabric because it's all going to contribute to the sense of the, the hedge effect. You don't want it to be sitting flat on the fabric so the, the texture and um, sort of movement in the fabric that's all going to be going to be a bonus. It was interesting the flowers on here they actually had a lighter center and a darker outside but the effect I wanted to create was the sort of the center that's darker because you've got all those petals sort of wound tightly up in a in the sort of the central bud and then the outer flowers being open and catching the light. So even if your fabric sort of says something, you can always feel free when you're painting with thread to do your own your own interpretation. I think that's actually as far down as I'll need to go because I think, yeah, that will be far enough down. So I'll just tie, tie that one off for now. I still need to add some more flowers to the central area as well, but we can do that another time. Excuse me, create casting a shadow. I just had to grab the, the scissors. And then I'm going to use the lighter Appleton wool to do the petals around the center. We had a lovely quiet weekend um, still taking it easy just while Alex is um, yeah we're still waiting to, to waiting to get answers on things had a bit of a frustrating um, medical appointment this week but I might might talk about that later or we might not talk medical appointments this time maybe we've talked that enough um, but we went to Inverloch on the weekend which was really lovely so just took a picnic down there and went for a nice 
um, walk on the beach with Travis the dog and he got to have lovely, lovely plays. I think I took some video, so I'll see. I don't know if I'll be able to add it at the end of this sometimes all my videoing, editing, it sort of pushes the, the phone to capacity. So if I can, I'll, I'll share a bit more of um, Travis enjoying the water. So as you can see, I'm just um, popping up and then popping down around and just doing sort of stitches, not that long, um, just enough to make a little, a little shape like a, a petal surrounding the core. So the long stitches around that center, center knot. I think when I was doing some of the other ones, I even did a little, uh, what stitch would that be? A little Y sort of shaped, well not a Y because it doesn't have the tail, just a V sort of shaped one, um, which I'll show you in a moment, because you can also do that to form the little petals around as well. And you don't have to do them all the same because you actually want your, your flowers to look slightly different from each other, um, like nature. So I'll do a Y one on this one. So for the Y, or not the Y, the V, I'm going to pop up. I'm then going, going to go to the other side of where the knot is. And I'm going to go down. I'm going to leave a little loopy bit on the sitting out above the fabric. And then I'm going to pop up in the middle of essentially the bottom of the V. And I'm going to pull and catch the thread. And then that's going to... One, I'm going to prick my finger, but you, hopefully you won't prick your finger like I just did. Um, and then I'm going to anchor down that little um, V or that little sort of curved shape, which gives you a little flower shape. Hopefully I was on camera. I don't know if I was. So I'll do another one up the top. I'm going to pop up at one side of my knot. I'm then going to pop down the other side of my knot directly opposite. I'm going to leave a tail poking out and then I'm going to pop up at the top of my knot and create a little loop by catching the thread and then holding the thread down by going down on the other side of it. And that way you get a nice little loopy shape and then you can just do a few more little stitches to create the impression of, of leaves. But if you don't want to do that style, you can just do the long little stitches around which is probably even more relaxing and this is all about the relaxation it definitely is I think that's why I sometimes struggle to put the video on because I'm just in such a lovely relaxed state come end of day I just like to sort of switch the world off and um, just sit there with my thread and my fabric and my bits and pieces and see where they want to take me. It definitely is a case of, yeah, looking around and my materials just sort of make me think what I want to do. It was, I was watching someone's video and I know I commented that um, I just looked across and saw the Appleton wools and thought, oh, they'd be great to make some, some roses. And the two colours are in the bag next to each other and I thought, yep, there's enough contrast, but they're sort of similar enough that they'll, yeah, they'll make lovely little roses. You probably have to look closely at it even to see the differentiation in the, the colour, but um, I like that. I don't want to be really obvious with my pieces. I want them to be something that you can look into and see and discover new details. Or if you don't look closely, then you just won't see those things. That's what I love about the slow stitching. You just can just keep adding little bits of, little bits of detail. until you're happy with your piece. And that's when a piece is finished. When you're happy with it, it's done. If you're still playing, it's not done. Okay. Might just do one or two more little petals. As I say, they don't have to look exactly the same. You just want to give that sense of a flower. With the Appleton walls, you want to use a needle with a decent um, sized eye on it so that you're not squashing, squashing your wool. So I think we've got all our 
roses done there yep and as I say I've just got to do the ones up the middle but I'll probably do that as part of um, yeah anchoring the piece down I wasn't sure if I was going to put some thread around the, um, the middle I haven't decided that not thread some more of the strip of the fabric around the middle almost sort of wrapping it but I think I'll probably just do that same stitching um, but I won't be able to turn this one in as much I don't think because it's just a bit thinner And then I'm just going to use a single strand of this burgundy embroidery floss and I'll switch to a beading needle which is one of these very thin fellows. We will test how well I can thread after a long day. First time lucky, we'll take that, we'll call that Pure luck, I think. It's a very long and slightly bent beading needle, but does the trick. Oops, it's come a knot. After I've threaded, I want to make sure I get a decent knot and not a knot too far up. Good day. Okay, and so I've got some beads. I don't know if you can see them. I just tend to put my beads on my um, quilt, which is on my desk here because I find the bees then uh, easy to pick up off the, the quilt and I just sort of keep them um, over in a semi, semi little collection at the side where I want them. So I'm going to pop up where the center of one of my roses is. Oops, I'll just make sure I'm on camera. And maybe I'll just bring the camera down a smidgeroo. Hopefully that doesn't make anyone feel squeamish. So I've popped up, I'm going to pick up a bead, which you now can't see me um, picking up the beads at the side, but I'm picking a bead up with my needle. And then I'm going to pop back down near where I popped up with my bead on my thread. And I'm going to leave my bead so that their little open centre is pointing upwards. And then I'm going to pop up again with my thread. I'm going to pop through the same way through the bead. And then I'm going to pop down to anchor it in place. And always good to do those those two stitches. One, it gives it um, extra sort of holding holding power, um, but also it gives you helps you position your bead so it will stay exactly where you want it to be. So I'm just going to pick up another bead. I'm going to pop that pop that on. Some people say they find beading very slow and sort of frustrating, but again, I find it incredibly relaxing. You don't have to think too much about it. Um, and at the end, you just get the lovely, the lovely added effect. Again, with this piece, you can see that little bit of sort of extra glisteniness, but you have to look closely at it to see exactly how the, how the flowers have been constructed. So I like that. Bit of mystery. We all need a bit of mystery. And we also had a birthday lunch that we went to on Sunday as well. So yeah, we had a beachy because it was a very hot day on Saturday. So that was our beachy outing for a picnic. And then yeah, Sunday, Sunday lunch for a, a lovely birthday celebration, which stretched well into the late afternoon. So that was most of the day taken up. So it was delightful. And I can't believe how quickly Easter is coming around. So I'm going to really have to get a wriggle on with my other um, Easter crafting as well. Because in the lead up to Easter, I've got my um, brother and sister-in-law and nephews and nieces coming to Melbourne. So that's going to be incredibly, incredibly exciting. So I'm taking off from the Thursday before Good Friday. Um, and Good Friday this year actually happens to be my birthday. So that's... That's exciting. Which I think, yeah, when I was in the year that I was born, I'm pretty sure Good Friday was my um, 
my birthday as well. This mum was actually making a batch of hot cross buns. Had a batch of hot cross buns in the oven when the other um, thing in her oven, being me in her belly, um, decided that I was going to come into this world. So she had to stop baking her batch of hot cross buns and go into hospital and go into delivery. And then on Good Friday, she was so much looking forward to um, the catering staff at the hospital bringing her a nice hot cross bun, but they didn't bring her one. So I think dad was dispatched out to get her her customary hot cross bun for, for Good Friday. So that's a funny story. Um, okay, what are we going to do next? I think we will do some stitching. Let me just put my beading needle aside. Um, we will start to stitch down this center area. We won't do all of it. And we'll get rid of this green thread that keeps infiltrating. <laughs> um, so what I'm planning to do, I probably need to pin the pieces in place so we don't end up with them migrating. Let me just check, I've got the right pointing up and up, good -o. Okay, so. Just need to position them where I'm gonna want them to be when they're stitched down. Something like that, I think. Can hear the cicadas singing outside. I closed the window because I thought they might be a bit loud, but I'm getting a bit stuffy in here. Upstairs always warms up during the day, so it needs a bit of time of sort of cool evening air to, to cool down properly. But I do like my view. I've got the nice view of the evening sky as the sun's drifting away and the sky's turned a beautiful pinky mauvey. Almost it reminds me of um, some of the, the colours in Elizabeth's Elizabeth Robinson's fabulous Down the Garden Path piece. She's got the beautiful greens and sort of light, um, light purpley colours. She shared a great video on how to, um, how she's creating her background that is well worth, well worth checking out. And I hope you're feeling heaps better too, um, Elizabeth. So got that pinned down so I'm just going to turn and you probably can't quite see that so let me move it up where you can see it let me get rid of that bead um, so I'm just as I stitch these this bit down I'm actually just going to turn the edge slightly but I might just put another pin in to hold this where I where I want to hold it it's probably okay actually going up there I like using patterns where you don't have to kind of be perfectly sort of, I guess, straight with how you how you position your fabric. I don't go with well with straight lines, I don't think, in my creative process. I'm gonna pop up from underneath and I'm just folding the first little edge edge over. I'm just using a light brown thread, which I've already managed to put a knot in before I have even started and not a knot at the end of it where you would actually want your knot but a knot part way along it far from the most auspicious start aha uh -huh. i think we've got our knot out yes we have okay onwards and upwards little setbacks and we keep going so we did have a little a little setback um with trying to get some further information on what's happening with Alex's naughty misbehaving heart. Um, he went in for his stress test on, on Tuesday, so that was yeah, yesterday. Um, so he'd been told to go for a further stress test of his heart, um, sort of like a week and a half after he started his medication, which was meant to be helping to sort of, I guess, stabilise and mean that his heart wouldn't be going into the sort of hyper beating state that had been picked up on his first stress test. So he'd been dutifully taking his medication, but before he went in for the 
a stress test and he booked in somewhere um, different to where he'd been getting his other um, care because they wouldn't have been able to fit him in until May and his specialist had said he should be tested about a week and a half after starting the meds. So he booked in somewhere else and then in the email they sent him about his appointment. They said you need to stop taking um, your heart medication or the med medica this particular medication. And I must admit at the time, I thought that sounded a bit weird because his cardiologist had been really clear that this medication was absolutely critical to keep Alex's heart and health um, protected and that he needed to start taking it straight away and um, continue taking it and most likely um, would need to take it for the rest of his life. So um, it didn't sound like something that you should kind of be stopping a week and a half after starting to take it. But I guess I'm one of those people that sort of figures people have expertise in the jobs that they're in and you listen to to expertise. Um, I don't kind of claim to, to know everything, but I think what this has taught me is that sometimes you should go with your gut and if your gut says, oh, this, something doesn't sound quite right, something's a bit NQR, then maybe you should actually um, ask a further question. And Alex was a bit the same as well. He said, oh, it's a bit strange they're telling me to, to stop the medication because we knew the medication was at least having um, some good effects because Alex's blood pressure had come right down um, and while he was feeling tired which is a side effect of the the medication um, he wasn't feeling particularly more tired than he had been before he started taking it um, and even his um, Alex's diabetes readings and things had actually got better with the medication um, so anyway, we both thought it was a bit strange, but we didn't didn't ask any questions. We took it at face value, medical advice, stopped the meds 36 hours before the test. So Alex did that, and then he went in for his test, um, and turned out that his blood pressure had just gone sky high again, to what they call sort of catastrophic levels, um, which put him at sort of like immediate risk of heart attack um, and so obviously they weren't going to perform the stress test because performing a stress test when someone's um, at heightened risk of having a heart attack is not a good thing to do so the stress test got postponed um, and they said oh yeah we um, shouldn't have had you stop your medication or we don't think we should have had you stop your medication and they said well we, we weren't sure what was written on your specialist's referral and so it seems like maybe they couldn't read the writing. I mean, we all joke about doctors having atrocious writing. Um, and on that basis, they just went with a standard protocol of no, no medications before the testing. I'm not sure what's happened. We're waiting to hear back from, um, from them and or from Alex's specialist to find out what exactly happened and why he was put in a situation where thankfully nothing nothing um, unfortunate happened beyond the high blood pressure and not being able to proceed with the test but where he was at risk of um, of heightened risk of, of having a, a heart attack so yeah main main message I reckon listen to your gut ask questions don't be afraid to ask questions and don't um, yeah don't kind of not value your gut feeling or your own sort of logic or your own own inquiry into something so anyway hopefully that's given you enough of an idea around here um, as i've been talking away of just how i'm turning over the edge as i stitch down the pieces and hopefully you can also see there just how much of a nice cohesive edge it's making but it is giving you a bit more texture as though the leaves have sort of been pushed back around the entrance. We can probably actually finish around the outside. How are we going for time? 29. And then we might just do some, some painting with thread. I'll quickly work my way around. So yeah, we're waiting to hear. Um, and hopefully he can um, go back for stress test to check out how the medication is working and that was the other weird thing it was like the cardiologist had told us the stress test will be to assess the effectiveness of the medication and so I was just thinking why would they have him stop taking the very thing that they're trying to assess the effectiveness of but I thought oh maybe there's like um, residual that stays in the system and provides that 
um, protective effect. And that's what I sort of rationalized away with, but probably not right, but given his blood pressure started to skyrocket virtually straight away. But he came straight home, took the medication as they then told him to do, and his blood pressure had stabilized by late yesterday, which was, was good. But he's just taken it extra easy today. Still done his work, but just, yeah, rested, rested when he needed to. And just regularly checked his, his blood pressure. Probably wear out that blood pressure machine at the rate he's going, but much, much better to, to measure it than to not measure it and then have an adverse event. back until I'm ready to stitch that down. Oops, that edge hasn't gone quite under there. And I think our other reflection actually was just how stressed the health system is at the moment, so it's not surprising that um, things are being overlooked or missed or things are going a bit awry. I really felt for some ladies on the news tonight who um, have the sort of have a higher risk of, of breast cancer in their families so they had um, organized to have um, surgery to um, breast surgery mastectomies essentially um, to remove the risk of, of breast cancer um, and during the pandemic they had um, their surgery postponed delayed because it's treated essentially on the same level of importance apparently is like having a tonsillectomy um, and then the lady that was on, on the news she then subsequently in that period that she was delayed that nine or ten months um, actually um, was diagnosed in that period with breast cancer which would have been avoided if she had have been able to have her her operation as planned sorry I've just popped out and Gone around the outside, not through my fabric. But yeah, that's a common story of people that have missed out on medical care just because of how stretched stretch the system actually actually got. I'm such a harbinger of happy stories, aren't I, on my videos? <laughs> I'll have to have to lift my game, but I suppose we can we can definitely feel compassion for people and also be appreciative of our, our own good health when we when we have it. I know I am. But hopefully, hopefully the health system can get itself back and hopefully get enough enough staff in the system. It's one of those industries where you really know when it's not it's not working as it sort of needs to. The impacts are absolutely seen. It's like the teachers and everyone else. Don't know how teachers do what they do. That's the one job I just, I would not be cut out to be a teacher. Such a tough job. I think they should definitely be a lot better recompensed when than they actually are recompensed. It's a tough gig. So hats off to any teachers watching this. When we were at school, my mum worked as a kindergarten assistant, so we used to pop up over to the, the kindergarten um, when it was after school and or if we had sort of yeah curriculum days and the the kindergarten was operating we'd get to pop along with mum and see what they were up to there but that's a tough gig as well I think it's a bit easier with the younger kids although mum even now she hates if she sees a kid snuffling she used to always have tissues in her pocket and always always get them to blow their nose not snuffle Mum actually tra trained as a pharmacist, so 
did university, did university at a time when um, in, pharm um, in pharmacy college, there were very few women. I think she was actually only one of two women in her, in her year. And she had some lecturers that just didn't think women should even be, be studying. She had one lecturer that told her, no, nope, girls, can't, girls can't do this. Um, but mum absolutely excelled and took that as a bit of a bit of a challenge and yeah proved proved him wrong. Graduated. But I guess it was a different time where um, women often then um, went out of the, the workforce when they had kids and um, raised kids full time. So at the time when mum had my brother, who's older than me, she was um, teaching at the pharmacy college, actually. Um, and her students didn't even know she was uh, pregnant with my brother, but she'd have her lab coat on um, every day. And she must have been carrying him sort of in a way that wasn't wasn't super sort of pokey, pokey out. Um, belly and so on her last day there apparently she told the students oh, well I, I won't be back um, next week and they said oh are you going going on holidays and she said no I'm actually I'm having a baby <laughs> and apparently they were they were quite quite shocked they had not guessed that she was she was pregnant Nowadays, mum's mum just loves playing in her garden. That's her favourite place to be, pottering in the garden. She even does gardens for some of her some of her friends. Does them at the the church that my nana and grandpa used to go go to. They've set up a beautiful memorial garden actually for nana and grandpa, which is really sweet. Because nana and grandpa were very very keen gardeners and always had an amazing variety of things growing definitely green thumbs I think I've managed to inherit a little bit of it for a while there I thought no I have no no green thumb at all but as I got older it it developed itself as I've mentioned my nana was also the seamstress and the keen keen sewer so I've definitely that's also um come out in in me um later later in life I've always been a crafter but not this sort of slow stitching is a more more recent um, over the last few years. Before that I'd done, yeah, felt sort of blade stitching, little felt creations and other little hand stitching projects, but not so much the, the slow style of stitching. So let's just tie that off. wasn't it yet. So there you go. That's the cohesive part of that. And where has my rabbits gone? There we go. Let's grab. So that's how it will look looking through to my Peter Rabbit. So I think that's pretty, pretty nice. So let's have a look at this. So the bit which we're going to see through here, let's just borrow this again for a secie, is we'll probably see sort of that area there. I'm wondering I might even just put a little a little bit of just black, which this is with my friction marker so it will come come off with a bit of heat. I'm just going to put a little bit of a line so we know where we don't need to do our colouring with thread outside of. So that's around there. So with these, just a bit like with um, this one, oh, actually with this one, hang on, before we get onto that, I'm going to show you just how I did um, the detail of his jacket. All of these were just done with long stitches just um, in different directions. And I used, I think, three different colours of cotton to give the, the sense of the sort of curves on the leaf. Um, and then likewise, just um, stitches across to do the, the carrots. 
and then just little um, stitches on the angle to do the edging around the spade and then just long short little not long short little stitches for the, the feathers apart from here where I just did some little V shapes similar to what I was doing when I did the V shapes on the the rows and then just anchoring down the bottom of the V with a stitch and then popping up and doing another little little V if you can see there but let's show you I've got some blue thread here which is what I used for his jacket Oops. oh yeah I forgot this is actually just one big roll it's not lengths of wool and I probably don't actually need that I'll cut that in just cut that in half I think and so as I mentioned we want to use a nice thick um, well, particularly a, a needle with a big eye, which tends to be a thicker, thicker needle. And then I might just bring you down a smidge again. Apologies if I'm making you seasick. So what I've done um, and what I did on this was I started by just doing some long, sorry, started by doing some stitches where I'd come up and then go down the other side and then you could either come up on that same side but a bit higher up and then go over but you're basically just doing a long or satin stitch all the way up and once you've done that you want to put a knot on the end of your wool which I hadn't done and you want to pop up at one end And then you want to almost um, weave going up. So you want to start to pick up and go on top of and below some of the, the threads almost like you're weaving. Because you want to give the sense that the, the wool is woven. So if you can see there, I've managed to pick up and go above some of the, the stitches. And then I'm going to do the same at the other, actually I'll pop down at the other end so that we anchor it. Because that'll also just help to sort of pull it down a bit. And then I'm going to do the same along here. And I'll show you in a moment another way you can get the same sort of effect. If you're finding it too hard to sort of weave your needle through. And it doesn't have to be precise on a piece like this. Maybe there'd be something you'd be doing where you would have to be more, more precise. But for this, it's fine if you're not. And I think I've managed to capture one of my own hairs in there. Which will be great if I ever want to have my DNA re recreated for my stitching projects. But maybe we don't need to see my hair sticking out of Peter Rabbit's sleeve. So I'll show you on this one. The other way you can do this is you can actually just pop up and pop down um, all the way along the length. And that way it actually anchors it down. If you want to sort of flashen it out a bit more, this is a good technique. Whereas that weaving will kind of keep it a bit more, a bit more puffy. So with this, you're just popping up to the extent that you can just on one side of a thread and then popping down on the, the other side. back down the other way and just do that over here as well so when I first started doing the jacket I was just doing the long sort of satin stitches and I just wasn't happy that it was giving me the the effect that I wanted so again just played just experimented even though I have lots of stitchy books I tend to just be someone that likes to likes to have a bit of a play and experiment not necessarily follow someone else's solution for something just work it out myself as I go along. I think I find that relaxing because and there's something quite rewarding I think about that sort of yeah problem solving as you go. So if you can see that's given you a really lovely effect of a, um, a, knitted, a knitted jacket. It's really good. Actually, I've just noticed I missed part of the jacket um, actually over there. So we can actually quickly do that 
together, I reckon. But it's more like his sort of collar, collar bitch, I think. So I might just do some long, some long stitches. I look forward to catching up on some more videos. Have to see who else has been posting their, their down the garden path pieces. Or if you've got other other slow stitch videos, chuck me chuck me a link in the in the comments. Or if you've got an Instagram with pictures of your, your slow stitch pieces. I've also got to properly check out the Facebook group. I haven't been much on Facebook the last last few days. We had a lovely taste of harmony morning tea at work yesterday. So I went into work. Most of my working time is um, still remote working, but always make sure I go in for, for social gatherings or other sort of yeah face-to-face -face gatherings. Um, so yeah, taste of harmony to celebrate cultural diversity and just had an amazing spread of, of beautiful, beautiful foods I made. Um, some Anzac biscuits and then I made some Rocky Road which I believe is disputed whether it originated in Australia or in the US but Wikipedia suggests Australia <laughs> was the originator I don't know hopefully we don't get into heated debate in the comments about who invented Rocky Road And then other people had made dumplings and roti with sambal and um, a little Asian um, coconut custard treats, amazing chocolate fudge, um, all sorts of good things. So for that collar, um, I just did little um, stitches following around in the shape of um, the collar. So with the painting with thread, you just really have to think about what way do you think um, the thread needs to go? And the good thing is, if you do something the wrong way, you can just do some extra stitches over, um, over it. You usually don't have to unpick it. You can just kind of keep adding the stitches till you get the, the effect that you want. So I will tie that off at the back. Yeah, you can just see on there how, many, how much fun I've been having doing my, my painting with thread by the background. A lot of painting and don't worry if it goes sort of um, a bit buckly like that there is the um, the technique where you're meant to sort of be smoothing it down as you go so you don't end up with it buckling I'm not too worried for this piece because if he's actually when I stitch it all down one he's just going to be in this little contained space but if he's actually sitting up a little bit from it I do actually want that effect with the background um, sort of yeah going into the distance so I think it's going to be absolutely fine I was pondering on whether I put a bit of stuffing as well behind him so he's sitting up a little bit but I think I'll be happy with him with him sitting flat so in terms of how I would approach these little bunnies I was thinking for the berries I might even use the same little beads that I used for the center of my roses so I've actually still got my my thread my needle threaded so let's and it's still the beaded needle beading needle so let's make hay while the sun shines ouch beading needles are not good to prick yourself with um, that's just a, a word from the not so wise I'm just picking up a bead off to the the right which luckily you can't see I don't think because it was not really working so well <laughs> but I do find it easier to have them yeah have them sitting there than to have them in a container or something I always find with containers I'm at such a risk of in my clumsy ways um, knocking it over whereas if they're sitting down there I can't really knock them over I can just accidentally maybe push one off the bench if I get too too enthusiastic so with these beads, I might actually have them sitting on their side like that one so that they look a bit more glossy, berry-like. So I'll just put another stitch in and just hold it, hold it in place on its side. Now let's see if we can get the others to sit on their side as well. 
I'll pop up on one side of the berry on the fabric, pop down on the other side. Yeah, I've really enjoyed painting with thread. I'm definitely going to do, do more of that. And I think particularly this design I really liked because it almost just had little um, sort of watercolour swashes of, of shading and it was really fun following those little shaded areas, but also adding a few of my own as well as I went along where I thought there was kind of that, um, that shaded point. And these bunnies I think are going to be a bit the, a bit the same. So I think I'm definitely going to have fun with them. And then I've still got my owl as well somewhere here who I'm thinking will be sitting sitting atop my hedge. Oops. So there's our three little splotches. Oops, some more hair and some fabric put. I just call them swatches, but the three little berries, my goodness. Okay, um, see, we might just do a few minutes of painting with thread. So what colour do we want to use for our bunnies? Got a few different, different colours here. Actually, I actually don't mind. I think it, this might be the same one of the ones I used on my Peter Rabbit. But I don't mind that colour for here as well. I guess they're all part of Peter Rabbit's family. We won't do all of it because otherwise that will well and truly push me, push me over the hour mark. And YouTube gets very slow when you're when you add an hour all over. So we'll just do a few minutes. So the outer ear probably won't be in the picture, so I won't skip, I won't not sketch, I won't um, paint that with thread. I'm just starting on this little inner area of the ear where I'm just going to do little stitches across on the diagonal actually following the grain of the fabric. Not absolutely perfectly because nothing that I ever do in my stitchery is absolutely perfect or even. As I say, sometimes you can't even um, immediately sort of spot that there's stitching there, but you can definitely spot it when you run your finger over it. And then when you look at it closely, you can just see there's that additional little, little glisten of thread. And likewise on the head here, um, I'll probably follow across, I think, and just go a different way here, almost sort of following the shape of the, the forehead of the the little bunny and I guess here I'm just trying to create the sort of sense of little tufts of tufts of fur so a little almost not totally random because you're sort of following the same the same direction but little little seed stitches in the same direction and interspersed And so that's probably kind of what I'm going to do um, throughout um, the two bunnies. We won't be able to see their little fluffy tails. I was hoping I might be able to do, um, what's the stitch, turkey, turkey stitch, where you create a little puffy, puffy shape with lots of um, threads poking through. But we won't be able to see the, the bunny tails, so there won't be any, any bunny tails, unless I have a little bunny pushing under my hedge or something then I could do a bunny tail. We will see. It won't take too much on for now. So um, that's the that's the little stitching I did there on the, the forehead. Um, sorry, and I just bumped. And then they're the little um, 
diagonal stitches I did there, the little berries, and basically all in the shaded area on the bunny. I'm going to continue doing, well, not all the way down because it gets cut off um, about there. Um, well, we might have a slight bit of a tail. I might be able to do a few little tufts, um, but I'm just going to be doing the same um, little thread stitches on the areas that are, are shaded and picking out those little more um, shaded patches. If I want to do any other lighter stitches, um, I can do like I did on the bird with a lighter um, thread. And for that, just I use just a regular cotton or polyester. I don't know what um, this one is, um, but just a thin thread for that purpose. So I think I will um, sign off there because this has gone way long enough. I think I've told you all my all our our little little updates, what we've been up to. Hope you are doing well and yeah, really looking forward to seeing what you've been up to with your stitching. Take care everyone and speak to you soon. Bye everyone.